guess who's back? Back again. <laughs> um, hopefully that transition uh, was a lot cleaner for y'all than it was for me because uh, I'm not gonna lie, it's actually been a few days. Um, the uh, the content here is actually a bit more substantial than I was expecting, so I wanted to like try the you know proper time to record. But anyway, let's get into the final act of rage. Uh, so when we left off, I just like entered this tunnel that kind of leads into the uh, the the base of of the authority. This might be Capital Prime. I'm not sure, but anyway, I need to get in there, and I've got like a like a, a USB drive with like a a code to hack their systems or something like that. Uh, so that's what I'm going to be using here. Now, if I can just figure out, yes, this is how you get through uh, tunnels. You kind of have to, you know, move forward. Um, th this in particular is giving me a lot of vibes of um, the base in, um, what is it called? The Doom reboot. How did I forget that? Um... Oh, apparently I'm leaving and going to do something. Hmm. Um, but like the uh, the the Mars base, the like pretty much the entire like the majority of the the, the first game in like this reboot Doom series, um, that base I think ha looks a lot like that. I mean, it is you know big metal pieces, but I don't know something about the specific way those metal pieces look, you know. Um, so I'm actually curious about where. I'm trying to go now. Using some uh some towing tech to just get get back there real quick. Let's see, do I have business in town here? Okay. So I don't actually have a side quest set. Am I going after an Easter egg here? That could very well be the case, because I'm trying to think. Okay, so I definitely remember where three of the four Easter eggs in this game, like the big Easter eggs, are. There's there's the Wolfenstein one in the like the ghost hideout, like the very first level where you just tap on the wall and it opens. Um, there's the, the, the Quake one, where you've got to go back to the, the Wasted Garage at a certain point in the game, and go around and touch the buttons, and then it will open, like, a, a portal. Somehow you get to, like, the difficulty select screen from, uh, Quake. And then there's the Doom one, where you got to go around touching the computers in... That might be the gearhead vault, actually. That seems right. And then there's also the id developer room, where there's the names of a bunch of developers, which I do not recall where that one is, even though I did literally play this and find it. I remember that a few months ago. Um, but that could be what I'm looking for here. But I seem very unsure of what I am doing. These uh, last couple episodes are going to be kind of, or I mean this last episode I guess is going to be kind of uh, uh, distillery heavy. And this environment is pretty spooky. Maybe it's just like that the echoing wind on metal kind of soundscape, but like this is eerie. 
Who knows what horrors lurk in the abandoned alcohol facility? That'll be the new uh, the new Goosebumps book. The the um, what would be a good title for that? Like the uh, 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 a, a swig of fear. No. Um, a, a, a bottle of fear for everyone on the house. That sounds more like a tagline, actually. Now that I think about that. Hmm. I try to try to keep thinking of this, but I don't know if I'll really come up with anything good. I must be really looking for something very specific here. Oh, I realized that um, since since the last time I streamed, I've gotten glasses, and I, I don't believe I mentioned that in the first part of this. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I didn't. Um, yeah, so apparently uh, my vision isn't quite as good as it used to be. Um, I was actually kind of surprised uh, how easy it was to like get used to using glasses because I thought it was going to be this whole thing where it's like uh, it it feels weird on my nose. I'm going to be like really noticing on the edge of my vision all the time. But no, I mean like I do I do notice it from time to time, but it's not like this thing like ah what's that? No, it's it's just kind of whatever. Um, but like my my vision wasn't like bad in the way of like like I didn't have really difficulty like making out things or like you know like reading books was fine. Um. Really, my major concern was, like, eye strain from looking at screens, which, I mean, if, if you haven't figured it out by now, I'm a big gamer. I play a lot of video games. I look at screens with all these lights going around, and, um, and for my day job, I work in software, so it's just like, you know, go to work, look at a screen, come home, have fun, look at a screen. <laughs> um, and... As much as I kind of wanted to think I had these super eyes that uh, were immune to what screens could do to them, it's uh, no, it's no super eyes. Not really a thing. No matter how much I like eating carrots, there are enemies in here. That is surprising. Um, but I think the uh, <laughs> other than like feeling like less strain and maybe getting like less migraines looking at screens actually the, the particular thing that I have noticed the most is playing God of War the uh, the, the soft reboot with Atreus playing that on my PS4 I can finally read the subtitles without squinting that like like, that game just has tiny subtitles. Like, I checked the settings. I have them as big as they can be. And I was struggling to look at those. Like, I think even with, like, like my slightly um, diminished vision, like, it's still kind of ridiculous that your biggest size was causing me to do that. I, I don't know. That seems weird. I'm not sure why the, uh, the subtitle font is so small. But at least I can read it now. Um, I really got to finish that up so I can start Ragnarok. I had started a, like a, uh, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to decide if it's a second or third playthrough because I definitely did, started like a new game plus playthrough after I finished it the first time. I just do not recall if I beat it. Did I beat it? I don't think. So, I definitely got very far, because I think in my new, new game plus playthrough is where, like, I, uh, 
I did a lot of the like in like late game side content, if I remember correctly. So I, I guess you know if I got over you know like seventy percent of the way through the game or whatever, that can count as like a playthrough. So so yeah, my third playthrough of God of War basically, but you know it's been a few years I played it like back, like if not the year it came out, like the year right after. Um, which uh, the first one came out in like. Or, sorry, the, uh, it's God of War 2016, if I remember correctly. So that's six, seven years ago at this point. That's, wow. That game, that game came out a long time ago, if that is the right year. Pretty sure it is. Wow. So, yeah, it's been a while. So I wanted to, you know, especially since, like, it's such a, like, story heavy game i wanted to you know refresh myself on the story also like it's just a really fun game like it's it's definitely one of my favorite games for you know multiple reasons um but yeah i don't know i guess there's no particular reason why i haven't finished this playthrough it's just like no you know like it's like i have so many different pieces of media i want to consume it's like God of War, My Hero Academia, um, uh, Risk of Rain 2, just so many different things. I'm not going to sit here and keep listing things because there's a lot, but yeah, there, there's just, there, there's so much good content in so many different mediums to absorb. Speaking of, I recently rewatched uh, Everything Everywhere All at Once. Did, did I mention that already in this episode? I don't know, but just that movie is great. It's probably it, it's a strong contender for my favorite. I think right up there with uh, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, which honestly I don't think those films are too different. Well, that was certainly a hidden valve, and that sounds like a doom door sliding. So I'd, I'd say we're, we're on a pretty strong track toward the... There we go. It's the in-developer room. Okay, so I remember hearing about this like a long time ago, and I never figured out how to find it. I mean, how would I, like, there's no way I'm going to find a secret like that just looking around, but... As far as I know, this is like everyone who worked at id at the time signed this wall, or, or maybe it's I'm just part of. I don't know because there's a lot of names here, but I also have no idea how big id was at the time. But yeah, like this is like the one, um, the one um, what you might call it, uh, Easter egg that I never found on my own is that, is that correct no that is not true at all because i remember the wolfenstein easter egg i had watched like a uh like a pre-release gameplay video where they just showed it <laughs> so then when i got the game i'm like oh i gotta go get that um come to think of it i highly doubt i actually found any of them on my own so i don't know why i said that um it's like, why would I ever think to just touch a bunch of computer screens on a random level or go back to a level that I already cleared a long time ago and tap some buttons? I don't know. But regardless, this was the one that I like hadn't seen for the longest time. And so this in the recording is the first time I'd actually seen this room apart from like a screenshot or whatever. And I did end up having to look up, um, you know, a little bit of guy. I, I didn't, I don't, I, if I were, like, I obviously didn't, um, you know, read verbatim, like, exactly how to get here because I wanted to have a little bit of a challenge. I saw John Carmack over there, Tim Willits on the other wall. So definitely some names I recognize. Um, you know, of course, you know, John Carmack has had s seemingly several career changes since then. I mean, he's doing cool stuff i'm not really sure exactly what he's doing at the moment but uh, of course uh, tim willits is the president of id now i think um but regardless so 
Okay, we finally checked off that, that fourth major Easter egg uh, off the list. I, I'm considering, like, those four, like, rooms um, to be the major Easter eggs. And then the minor ones are the things like the... Um, the Blake Griffin bobblehead, the um, the Vault Boy bobblehead, stuff like that. Uh, and as as far as I know, that kind of covers the Easter eggs in the game. Uh, it's very possible there's more that I don't know about. I've never really looked up like a, a full on like completionist guide or whatever to this game, but I think that's about it. So, okay, so it looks like I'm gonna go take on the Gearhead Vault again. Yeah, there's probably going to be a lot of cuts in this video because I recognize um, I'm not exactly, uh, you know, providing commentary moment to moment. You back off. But, uh, <laughs> like, I mean, I, it's, it's already weird enough, like, redubbing. Uh, old videos where I, I'm not even sure what I was saying or, or thinking at the time. So yeah, this is going to be a bit more chopped up and and to kind of, you know, just like try to just have the good bits uh, available. What is going on here? The storming something. It's you know, it's kind of neat that they have a little scene like that where, like, you might not even see it, but it's got, like, unique animation, I think, and some unique voicing. That's cool. Um, but, yeah, with my move toward more, like, Let's Play style content, you know, I'm kind of hoping to be able to do minimal, minimal editing, uh, but we'll see how things go. I'll try to... Man, they they're just all saying back off. That must be like the like the first thing they learn, you know, uh, authority training. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll, I'll see like what I really want to do with my videos. Um, is this a Half Life Two reference? I think that's a Half Life Two reference. Where at the beginning of the game, the the one guard at the train station tells you to, to pick up a can and like put it in the trash or something. Man, Half Life Two is a good game. Like Half Life One is definitely good, but like I don't like it as much as as Two. Sorry to say if if anyone is uh, deeply offended by that sentiment. Wait, is that the room where there was like? I'm pretty sure I, I did it in an earlier episode where, like, if you sidle up to the room, you, like, hear music coming out of it. Are they talking about Precious? Okay, Norbu. It seems like a big um, security risk to just have the entrance to a bandit camp, like, right in the middle of your town. Okay, yeah, I was right, the gearhead ball. This is the one where you can do the, the Doom Easter egg. 
Oh, this place is authority out. This might be uh, tricky for old uh, past peanut buffer. That's exactly what I want you to think, sucker. Does he have eyes in the back of his head? Like... Oh, why am I using the regular, like, assault rifle to steal AR rounds? That's not going to do much damage. Come on. I mean, I guess that was an alright kill, but, like... Okay, now I figured it out, and I figured I should use the authority machine gun that can actually do damage to these guys. Especially with the AV2X rounds. Yeah, I really like how chunky the, the reload sound is on the authority machine gun. Ah, that sounds great. Oh, jeez. <laughs> When that turret hits me and like the camera just like shakes and I get double vision, like it is so hard to fight these things. Oh, I guess the uh, yeah the, the grenade simplifies that a lot. <laughs> I'm not even sure if I meant to use the grenade to deactivate that thing there, but it sure worked out for me. <laughs> I just like the way like the bits of armor come off the enemies. I, I actually don't know if that has like a uh, any mechanical re relevancy where like when they got armor on you do like like fifty percent damage or something, and when the armor comes off you do a hundred percent damage. I don't know something like that. It kind of feels like it, especially with characters out of helmets like getting headshots, but. I don't know, it could just effectively be like the helmet is just a representation of them, you know, having full health and then the helmet comes off there at half health. I don't know. No, probably not. I think probably the, the helmet is meant to be like a hit of armor and if you do enough damage to it, the helmet pops off so then you can get a headshot. That's, that's probably how I would design it not that I think that I have as many as much experience and as many skills as the id designers um, but I mean that seems relatively sound to me oh they closed off the bar area no how am I supposed to get a, a drink now not that I got a drink before but you know I'm a little surprised that guy's not dead, actually. Well, I mean, now he is, but like, right before I said that, he was surviving quite a bit longer than I anticipated. Oh, that's nice. The uh, EMP grenade, like, latches on to the things that it's going to deactivate. Makes it a lot easier to use. Man, that, that, that guy over there behind the pillar saw me instantly. But this other guy was like, la dee -da, there's no danger. <laughs> but here I am.
I really like that where like shot him in the small of the back and he just was like, ow, like like he, he I don't know, I, I guess they just they scripted in like a really good reaction to getting shot in the back, I don't know. Oh, I'll give you a visual. Really? Because you barely saw me. You like popped up for half a second, said that, and shot at the same time. And now you're dead. How well did that work out for you, huh? And I've got plenty of authority rounds. It's, yeah, that's an interesting thing with, um... Ooh, hello, more, more, more cards for the game we do not play! Uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that's an interesting way that, like... Especially with the alternate ammo, um, the games like this can build in like a, a power creep where it's like, oh hey, here's this enemy that you're going to struggle with super hard the first couple times you fight it, but now that you have this weapon that just does incredible damage to them, like, it, it almost feels like when you had like the second or third gun against the basic enemies. <laughs> I don't know, I feel like that, that's pretty different than, like, RPG progression, where generally it's just, like, your raw numbers are so high that, like, even if you're using the basic sword from before, you just do, like, a million damage to this level one creature. Whereas this, like... I mean, sure, there are, like, health upgrades and stuff in Rage, but... You know, it kind of follows that pattern of a lot of shooters where, like, your, like, your actual, like, character statistics aren't really changing that much, but your your tool set is expanding, and that's what gives you more power. Which, I mean, that's obviously not exclusive to shooters, and even, you know, RPGs to an extent have expanding tool sets, but that is not the, like, the, what am I trying to say? That is not the like the only aspect of how the character progression goes, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Whereas, you know, games like Rage are especially like more like, like classic style shooters. It is one hundred percent just like the arsenal that you have. I was not paying attention. I do not know if I completed this mission or not. I guess so, since I got, I got the Assault Capital Prime mission on now. A plus primo. We should have like t-shirts that say that. I feel like that would get pretty popular. Just like, hey, I'm A plus primo. <laughs> it's almost like a crusty and a clown laugh there. It's not quite what I was going for.
All right. Finally, we are here to take on the authority, stick our USB drive right into their main computer, and uh, have one of the most anticlimactic endings to a game I've ever seen. <laughs> I'm telling you, it just, it just, it just kind of ends. Um, we get one last scenic drive looking at that super nice JPEG skybox that suggests a whole open world out there that we don't get until the second game. Here we go. Get one nice long look at it. This is the last time we'll see it even though we already saw it before <laughs> you know just gotta crash the car a little bit for old times sake but all right uh who's ready to finish rage wait what oh, okay <laughs> who's ready to finish rage Here we are back in the Doom Mars facility tunnels. Half expecting to see Super Turbo Turkey Puncher somewhere around one of these corners. That's a reference for all my Doom 3 fans out there. Rise up! <laughs> Some BFG rounds, uh, don't mind if I do. <laughs> it took until me punching that drone for it to decide I was unauthorized. Okay. Why don't I just put on some authority armor? They like to probably about Nikki Rain's size, right? Eh? Permanently increases max health, but tastes like ass. Hmm. I mean, I don't know. Like, if, if you had some... Uh, I was about to say, if you had something that would make you healthier, but taste terrible, would you eat it? But, like, that's literally, like, some vegetables. <laughs> like, sorry to all the Brussels sprouts fans out there, but I think they're terrible, but they're... Uh, Healthy, right? I don't mean to I don't mean to imply that I'm a vegetable hater, so don't spread those rumors, okay? There are vegetables I do like. Like uh lima beans, green peas, broccoli, green beans. Um, the sweet, sweet potato is a vegetable. Yeah, not just a starch. Okay, we're good. Yeah. So yeah, there there are vegetables that I do like. I just don't like Brussels sprouts. Ooh. Uh, let's see. I... Sorry, I just had to take a moment to figure out if a cucumber was a vegetable or a fruit. It's a, it's a vegetable. I figured it out. I like cucumber, but I hate pickles. Um, and also, my, my opinions are not limited to vegetables. There are also fruits that I like and do not like. Like um, bananas, I'll put that in the like category. Strawberries, the do not like category. Okay, y you following me? Apples, we like them. Let me let me try to think. What 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 are more fruits that I definitely don't like because I like grapes I like raisins uh, I like blueberries you 
is it really just just gonna come down to essentially strawberries and Brussels sprouts I don't know but now you know more about my diet or I guess not really really my diet but like my food preferences I never really needed to Oh, yeah, as I alluded to before, I very much like carrots. I like them raw. I like them cooked. They are very good. Carrots are a top-tier vegetable. It's like a reverse version of that one elevator from Half-Life 2. I mean Half-Life 1. There might be one like in Half Life 2, I don't remember. It's, it's actually been longer since I played that than the first game. Hmm. Yeah, I just gotta pull out my big friggin' gun for this. Because this seems like where they'd throw something at me. Oh, oh, spicy mutants. I forgot about these guys. Wow. That guy was climbing on nothing. Did you see that? Cue the X-Files theme. Uh, these guys are, are attacking my frame rate. Did that guy just punch the wall when he came down to the floor? Okay, did Kyle much? Wait, no, this can't already be it. This is, if this is just the ending already, this is even shorter than I remembered from a few months ago. Like, what? Okay, there's an elevator ride at least. Okay, whew. I thought like the ending of the game was going to be right there, and I was going to be even madder than I used to be about how this game ends. But no, okay, so we still got to kind of like go up through this tower. Okay. Oh, hello. Some pulse rounds. Some uh, a delicious screen to touch, which I might have actually had to touch anyway, I'm not sure. Okay, yeah, that door was closed. Oh, hello. Mutants are just popping out like it's Mutant Bash TV over here. Man, how many mutants can just fit in a wall hole like that? Lots of decoy wall holes.
yes, manually saving the game because this game, once again, uh, does not have that that many uh, auto save uh, checkpoint type things. The authority really was just like, what if we took minions and gave them guns? <laughs> And not even, like, particularly good guns. Like, these, like, short burst, like, plasma guns that seem like they take a long time to cool down or something. I mean, sure, they got the down on me there, but, like, you've seen how I've been playing this game. That, that's not a feat. I guess we're supposed to be like extending like the antenna to get to the network or something like that. Essentially, <laughs> we gotta gotta connect to uh, uh, Starlink to 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 figure out where all the arcs are. Pulse shot? Why am I using pulse shot? Yo, that mutant like slid under the pulse shot? They're unlocking new tech as we speak. Yeah, come on, switch ammo types. To... Okay, switching weapons entirely. It was really nice of the authority to just paint this red line that goes directly to the central core. It's like, were they expecting this to be like a theme park attraction at some point? And they wanted to go ahead and mark out where the queue was going to be or something? Oh, final ugly kingdoms. We're almost ready to connect to Starlink. It 
just feels weird that I'm not fighting anything. Okay, now there's enemies. But I don't know, it felt like that should have been a thing where like in between each button press there was like a wave of enemies to make this like, <laughs> this is a final fight. But now it's just they throw like a few little mutants at you. Like, with all the other like pretenses of bosses in this game, and like, I mean, come on, the fight with Precious in the Dead City with the rocket launcher is like such like a boss fight, boss fight, you know? And then, like, this is the finale of the game, like. Just keep watching. I'm, I'm just like, does this does this feel like the ending to a game to you? <laughs> I don't think so. This feels like a like just like a, a a part in the middle, just kind of padding out time or whatever. Honestly, I guess they, I guess at least they give you, like, a fair number of fights against this new type of enemy that just got introduced. Where's that final button? And this, this, this is the end of the game. <laughs> you fight some mutants on this circle. And then you touch a button, stick in your USB drive, and the game's over. <laughs> like... I mean, I still, I still really like this game. I think it's fun, but like, what? A, like, it's just anticlimactic. Like, there's no like huge boss fight. You don't, you don't get to like see General Cross. I forget if he was even mentioned in this game. Like, it's like if. If a show just ended, like, an episode or two before the finale, like, I mean, okay, it is pretty cool that, like, we're getting all the arcs to, to come up out of the ground like this, you know. I guess, you know, contextually wise to the story, this, this is kind of a cool climax, but... In terms of the journey of Nicholas Rain, in terms of our journey as the player, especially in like a like gameplay sense, like it's just <laughs> you fight some mutants on a circle and press a button, and that's how the game ends. Um, yeah, so that's the end of the campaign of Rage. Um, I believe I did do a little bit more here where I just wanted to take a look at the the trophy room because we got that at the end of the Scorchers DLC uh, and that actually fills out with, with items from throughout the game uh, so it'd be nice to kind of see you know that filled out now that you know because that was done forever ago that was like back in like the first quarter-ish of the game Yeah, we're just going to go back to um, Wellspring. I almost call it Firestone. This isn't Borderlands. 
Anyway, we're going to go back to Wellspring and take a look at that snazzy trophy room where, um, what's-her-face is going to be hanging out. I can't even remember her name. The lady from the Scorchers DLC. <laughs> like, honestly, I don't remember her many characters. Like, there's, there's Dan Hagar, Lusum Hagar... Sheriff Black? Let's see if I can figure out where the trophy room is. Well, I've made a circle. No, I don't think it was in jackpots. I don't even know how this mini game works. Is this just roulette? Um, that that HUD looks very weird and nothing at all like how the roulette table right underneath it looks. Yeah, I didn't play because this game is scary. Okay, bye bye. Here we go, here it is. So yeah, let's see. Now uh, that's just kind of stuff that's been there, I think. There's from passive aggressive. I I guess that's for killing things with a turret. I don't I don't quite remember. Um but there's the id logo for finding the developer room, the dev graffiti trophy. Uh, that's just a dartboard. The ghost hideout trophy from clearing that out. Uh, I guess I can privately play the, the, the bishop from Aliens game. Those cigarettes are just 2D textures, and so is the coffee stains. It looks weird. There's Sarah, that's her name. Hi, Sarah. I didn't think we had that kind of relationship, Sarah. I'm a little weirded by out by that. The Bash TV trophy, Blue Line Station trophy, Night Blossom. Oh, is that for? Yeah, it's for getting the plant to make the thing. Shrouded bunker. The Dead City, the Shambler from the, the Quake Easter egg. Bringing home the bacon trophy? Uh, is that Mutant Bash? Mer Doom Marine Bobblehead, Gearhead Vault, Wasted Garage. Uh, maybe there's a missing trophy there. Uh, Blake Griffin. <laughs> Get Blake in rage. We did it, guys. The Wolfenstein Goblet. Uh, for the power plant. Uh, I'm not 100% remembering what the power plant was. There's the Vault Boy, looking as big of a head as he ever has. 
uh, the the Pinkies uh, snack. Jackal Canyon, which I think is the, the Mutant Bash Season 2 location, if I remember correctly. Uh, is that all the trophies? I mean, that sure covers a lot of the game. What's in this courtyard down here? Uh, nothing, it seems. Okay. Well, that was a neat little walk down memory lane to finish out Rage. Um, you know, that, that, that kind of, you know, covers what this game has. Uh, this has been Rage. This has been a lot of fun. If, you know, a bit awkward having to redub because I didn't check my audio before a bunch of recordings. Um, but yeah, so this was Rage. Um, if you're following this on YouTube, thank you so much. Um, I know, like me, there's probably a lot of other media you could be watching or playing or listening to. Um, so, you know, thank you for, for checking me out, uh, especially if you're still sticking around. Like if, you're, if, if you're on this video, you're probably uh, invested or curious or something. But, you know, thank you. Uh, it, it, it's huge to get any kind of support, really. Um, but yeah, so this has been Rage. Um, uh, you know, Rage 2 videos will start appearing on the channel soon after this one uploads. Hopefully if I don't go on another hiatus. Um, but yeah, uh, I have been Peanut Buffer. This has been fun. And we did it. We finally finished Rage. And look, we're back to where we started it all. The Hagar Settlement. All right. See you guys next time we visit the Wasteland. Later, y'all.